friend and fellow New Jersey fly tire, Bob Creeley, introduced me and a number of other local guides to the stonefly creeper this past spring. It's certainly nothing new, rather an old pattern of Preston Jennings that's mentioned in his seminal work, A Book of Trout Flies. Both Mr. Creeley and I have taken some liberties when it comes to the original ingredients, but I believe we've stayed true to the pattern. The stonefly creeper is supposed to imitate a yellow or golden stonefly nymph, which I think it does quite well. We are very fortunate here in northwestern New Jersey to have tremendous water quality that allows extremely sensitive stoneflies to thrive in many of the area's rivers and streams. For a hook, a Dairiki number 730 in size 10 is a good place to start. I like to tie this pattern using a rotary vise as there are a number of steps where it comes in real handy. For thread, I've loaded a bobbin with a spool of UTC 70 denier in one of my favorite colors called wood duck. Start your thread on the hook shank, leaving a two eye length space behind the hook eye. Then, take a few wraps rearward before snipping or breaking off the tag. Select eight or so natural colored pheasant tail fibers for the extra long tail and strip them free from the stem while keeping their tips aligned. It's a good idea to snip the little curlies off as they tend to grab tying thread. With the fibers in the fingertips of your right hand, measure to form a tail a full hook in length and then transfer that measurement rearward to the start of the hook bend. With a pinch wrap, begin securing the fibers to the top of the hook shank. Make tight, open spiral wraps of tying thread all the way back to the bend. Once the fibers are well secured, lift the butt ends up and snip them off close. Pull down on your bobbin to expose about three inches of thread. I like Australian possum dubbing in a color called golden stone for the body of the fly. Build a fairly long, tapered dubbing noodle on your tying thread. You want the body to have some volume, like the naturals, so don't be shy with the dubbing. I like to wind the noodle forward to behind the eye and catch the end of the dubbing there. This will allow me to hold the bobbin out parallel to the tying bench and spin the rotary vise, which will in turn cord up and tighten the dubbing noodle until it resembles a twisted rope. I then unwind the rope before starting to build the body of the fly, beginning right at the base of the tail and ending at the initial tie-in point. Although there are many materials you can use for the fly's downturned soft hackle collar, here I'm going to use hen hackle in a medium dun. Select a feather with barbules that match the hook size you're using. Prep the feather by holding it with the shiny side facing you and strip away the lower fibers. Then pull down a half inch or so of fibers in the middle of the feather to isolate the tip. Finally, snip the tip off, leaving a small triangular tie-in anchor. After uncording the thread a bit by spinning your bobbin counterclockwise, lay the tie-in anchor against the near side of the hook and take thread wraps to secure it. Get hold of the stem with your fingers or hackle pliers and use the fingertips of your left hand to preen and fold the fibers rearward. All they need to do is angle back a little bit. Start taking touching wraps or turns with the hackle to build up the collar. This is another place where a rotary vise comes in real handy. Once you've made four to five turns, anchor the hackle stem with wraps of tying thread. Reach in with the very tips of your tying scissors and snip the excess butt end off close. Now, wet your fingertips and preen the fibers back and down. Follow with a few wraps of tying thread rearward to lock the fibers in this position. A single wood duck flank feather is used to create the wing or back of the fly. Strip the lower fuzzy fibers free from the stem and then do your best to fold the feather around the stem Ideally, all the tips should still be aligned. If the clump curves one way or the other, orient it so the concave side faces down. Lay the clump on top of the hook shank so the tips extend to the back edge of the hook bend. Then, take wraps of tying thread to secure it in place, like so. When you're happy with the wing, use your tying scissors to snip the butt end of the feather off at a shallow angle. 
Continue taking wraps or turns with your tying thread to build up a nice head on the fly. Do a four or five turn whip finish to secure your tying thread. Seat the knot well and snip or cut your tying thread free. The proportions are a little different than most nymphs, but as a whole, everything just seems to work. I like to use a drop of UV Cure resin on top of the thread wraps to not only secure them, but also to build up a nice shiny head on the fly, kind of like on the naturals. I absolutely love old patterns like this that are more impressionistic than realistic. Thanks to Preston Jennings for coming up with it and to Bob Creeley for bringing it to our attention.